Welcome! This tutorial will cover general issues people encounter while filling out FEMA's Elevation Certificate form. It is part of a broader how-to series focusing on FEMA's Elevation Certificates, more specifically how CRS would like you to complete them. For a full list of videos in this series, see the video description below. This is a companion video to the series of five videos we have that cover how to fill out all sections of the Elevation Certificate. We realize that there are some general issues with ECs that don't necessarily fit neatly into particular sections, but need to be understood. And to keep the video from being too lengthy, we've broken it up into two parts. This is part one. It is best to view this video after you've seen the other five videos on how to fill out each section of the EC so you have a basic understanding of what each section captures. And as a reminder from our other videos, these CRS EC training videos are primarily created for local officials who have to collect, review, and correct these forms so that they are correct for CRS purposes. Surveyors, engineers, and architects who are authorized by law to certify elevation information should also find these videos helpful. The first thing we need to cover is how do you know what is right or wrong on an EC, and what fields is CRS concerned with? To explain, we are concerned with all fields that affect the insurance rating of a building and all fields that tell us whether a building is NFIP compliant or not. The best way to learn that is to go through those five training videos we have. Short of that, we have created a cheat sheet of sorts, or what we call the EC checklist, that shows you each field we check on the EC along with some comments about what's acceptable in a few spots. You can obtain checklists for the 2019, 2015, and 2012 EC forms by contacting your ISO CRS specialist or CRS resource specialist. All four pages of the form are shown along with the fields we check for CRS purposes. Another thing you're probably wondering about is the changes in the CRS 2021 addendum that affected when you submit ECs. The easiest way to understand it is that ECs will no longer be submitted with your cycle verification. They will now be submitted only at your recertification date each year. And every community will have to submit them no matter when you just cycled, whether you are currently undergoing your cycle or whether you have a cycle scheduled for later in the year. All CRS communities will submit their ECs at their recertification date starting in 2021 and every year thereafter. I wanted to cover these two points here, but there is more to the changes that come with the 2021 addendum regarding ECs, so for more details, please contact your ISO CRS specialist or CRS resource specialist, and they will send you a link to our recorded video on the Class 9 changes and changes to Activity 310. Okay, digging into the meat of the training now, we will be covering a multitude of issues that are good to keep in mind when dealing with ECs. A first obvious item we should talk about is the expiration date of each form. There are two dates on the form. The date of the form is in the lower left-hand corner of each page. In this case, we're looking at our form dated December 2019. The other date is the expiration date of the form, and it's in the upper right-hand corner. You can see the current form's expiration date is November 30th of 2022. Now, the point to make about these dates is that it matters when the form was dated or certified and what form was used. Over the years, as FEMA has published new EC forms, they have granted grace periods for phasing out the old form and officially requiring the new form. Those grace periods have changed over the years, with FEMA recently stating that there are no more grace periods for the new form. So we at CRS have kept track of the dates over the years and can show you what they are. Let's start with the July 2012 form, since some communities may still have some buildings built before this form expired and have these to submit for CRS purposes. The form was dated July of 2012, and you could use this form when it came out in July of 2012. However, through a one-year grace period from FEMA, the previous form, the 2009 form, could be used all the way until July 31st of 2013. However, after that point, from August 1st, 2013 forward, only the July 2012 form could be used. Then, once the 2015 form was published, FEMA granted a grace period until December 31st of 2016 to use the 2012 form. But once January 1st, 2017 hit, you could only use the 2015 form. Now, when the next form was published, the December 2019 form, it was not published until February 21st of 2020, 
and this time FEMA said there was no grace period. So the last date the 2015 form could be used was February 20th, 2020. This means the current form must be used for any EC signed and dated by the surveyor as of February 21st, 2020. If you have received an older form, the 2015 form, and it's dated February 21st, 2020 or after, it is an error for CRS purposes. The best way to fix it is for the local floodplain administrator to take a new EC, go to section G, check the box for G1, and attach the EC that used the wrong form to it. Be sure to sign and date the new form and include comments in section G as to what you are doing. Also, fill out sections A and B on the first page to make it clear that the EC is for the same piece of property. Another item we should cover is handling ECs. While you're in the CRS program, you must keep a record of your ECs forever. It's a great idea, even if you're not in CRS, to keep your ECs as they're very important building permit records. They can be kept in any format that allows you to retrieve them both for yourself and anyone who inquires about one and can be submitted to your ISO either in hard copy or digital. We strongly recommend you submit digitally. Most everyone has gone to this now. Sometimes an EC may have an embossed seal or one that doesn't show real well after you copy it. For your records, yes, you need to have the form sealed, but for CRS records, even if we can't see the whole seal and can tell it was there and it was just a copying issue, or you tell us the seal is there and we see a signature and date on the form, we will accept it for CRS purposes. And while we're talking about signatures, digital signatures are acceptable as long as we can tell they were signed and they are not hidden. Lastly, FEMA asks that you not write on the form in a way that causes any important part of the form to be blocked, uncertain, or misrepresented. Some state laws explicitly say only the certifier can write on the form or change it. Know your state law and know what surveyors can do and what you can do as a local official. Generally, FEMA says you can write permit or file numbers or something useful for permitting purposes on the form. Just don't block any important information on the form when you do so. However, do not change the form by writing on it. We have an entire video on how to make changes to or correct an EC. Please refer to that for correct ways you can fix information on the form. Quick piece of advice here is to use Section G to make changes or clear up anything if you feel you need to. Section G is where you, as the local floodplain administrator, can write the notes you need to and make changes on the form. Let's cover some miscellaneous issues now. If there is one error on an EC, the entire EC is considered wrong. And it's the number of ECs that have errors that we count, not the total number of errors on each EC. When ISO reviews your ECs, we are primarily trying to determine if there are any errors on the EC, those things that might lead to a misrating. However, FEMA has also asked us to look at compliance issues. While FEMA officially determines compliance, we are generally pointing out buildings that may possibly be non-compliant based on the information from the EC. When a building is identified by us as possibly being non-compliant, it does not count as an error on the EC also doesn't necessarily mean it's non-compliant. It's meant as a trigger for you to look at it and double check yourself. We also forward these ECs to your state NFIP office and FEMA regional office for them to do any follow-up they deem necessary. When you submit your ECs to ISO for review, if they do not fit the CRS requirement of all buildings constructed, substantially improved, and or reconstructed due to substantial damage in the SFHA, they are called. So, when the building is in the X zone, or if we can tell it's not an insurable building like a cell tower, small accessory shed, etc., or non-substantial improvements, improvements of less than 50% your permit list or notes on the EC itself, we will remove those from consideration in our review. They are not counted as wrong, just removed from consideration or culled. We used to call those ECs that were marked in C1 as construction drawings or buildings under construction, but as of the date the new EC form came out, February 21st, 2020, we are now considering those types of ECs as errors since you are supposed to be submitting only those ECs for finished construction. And if you don't have a finished construction EC for a building, then that is an error for CRS purposes. So please be careful with what you are submitting. As long as you have a structure that fits the NFIP definition of an historic building, a 50% or more improvement to the building, or repair from damage, does not qualify as a substantial improvement. 
so you are not required through CRS to submit an EC for it. You should probably obtain one anyway for your local records, but you do not need to submit it for CRS purposes. For any kind of building that might have multiple units, condos, townhomes, duplexes, apartment complexes, etc., since it's all one large building, we normally see one EC for the entire building and each unit is able to use a copy of that EC for their policy, provided the EC is valid. For example, a condo association would obtain a policy covering the building and each unit owner would ensure their contents and perhaps some building coverage if the association is not carrying $250,000 per unit. For contents only, the building EC would be used and then the location of the contents would be captured, i.e. lowest floor only, one full floor above ground, in order to determine the rate. An ISO review starts with software that reads ECs then a resource specialist who checks each field to ensure it was read correctly, and then another piece of software that applies the errors and flags possible non-compliance issues, which is again confirmed by a resource specialist. Many communities have asked for a copy of our software that checks for errors and compliance issues. While we'd love for you to have a copy, we cannot make our software available for the following reasons. The programming behind it is always being perfected and altered as FEMA makes changes. We do not have staff to address tech support for it at this time. It is not as simple as entering the fields and having the software work perfectly. Anyone confirming the software's results needs to fully understand how the software works. And anyone using the software must be expertly trained to know exactly what's acceptable and what isn't, and exactly how the software is being programmed. Continual training is constantly being done in the background, and we just don't have the staffing and time to provide that training nationwide. This concludes part one of our training on general issues with ECs. Please continue on to part two of general issues with ECs. And thanks for watching.